Oh, what? Uh, actually, electrical content? Yeah, mum. This is my board at home. It's about, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. It's still in good nick. I've repaired it a few times. Obviously, not only the gas bits, I'm not called registered. You'll see there, like, I've been toying with the, um... That's the hot water temperature, that one. That one's the hot water temperature. And I've worked out what the different settings mean relate to that because there's no point heating it up to 52 to cool it back to 40.5 with cold water up in the bath. So I've set it, it's set there at the minute, which is just over 43 according to my last calculations because if it heats it up and I cool it down, that's not economical. So I toyed with that and that makes a saving. However, the pipe sends the water out to the radiators and it comes back, the flow and return. And I was thinking, well, hang on, how what is it going out and how is it coming back? And I'm doing a load of other stuff that have got on this playlist related to the economy. And to work out what it's going out at and what it's coming back at, I've used Shelly stuff again. So if you haven't seen Shelly, they're a range of like Wi-Fi enabled switches and stuff. In fact, you'll see that red one stuck on there. That's a Shelly 1PM, which I'm not using. It's just powered up because this thing here is called a Shelly add-on, which does loads of clever stuff for the cost. And you'll see it's clipped onto the back of the Shelly. It uses this as the Wi-Fi bridge, and this does the gubbins. And you'll see there's three sets of cables. They go to three of these PT100s. This one's going to be an external one. I'm going to drill a hole in the wall for it there. And what I've done is I've got one on my return, and I've got one on my flow. So I'm going to put it all in, and I'll put a screenshot up, because what I'm going to do is, when my board is back up and running again, obviously it's summer now, which is why I'm doing the upgrades, I've got to see what temperature it's going out as flow and what it's coming back as return. I don't know what those are supposed to be yet, but I'm just pretty keen to balance my radiators properly so that, one, the ball is not having to heat the water up too much when it comes back, or I think you might want to take all the heat out of it. I don't know which is more economical, but I want to find out. This is just the first stage. At the minute, my boiler just heats the entire house. The flow goes out, it goes into there, goes to the front of the house and the back of the house off a T which I can adjust the flows on, and then it comes back. So I haven't got upstairs and downstairs separate as I would like. It's not worth me making upstairs and downstairs separate because the house is all finished off and I start smashing water and stuff. So I'm going to fit an outdoor temperature, the flow and return, which we're here now. I'm also going to fit a hot water temperature so I can see what temperature of that water's going in, possibly an internal one. Those Shelly things cost about, I think, about 50 quid, so they're not massively expensive. They're set on a separate Wi-Fi network I've got in here. And when you've got the data, you can do stuff. So I'm going to gather the data and do the stuff. Next stage, once I've fitted these, I'm going to drain the entire thing down and fit thermostatic radiator valves, nice new mechanical ones, to all the rooms. And then I'm going to upgrade that to either the Shelly one, which does automated thermostatic control at your rad valve, or I'm going to use the Tado one. I don't know how it integrates with the Shelly stuff, which you mean. So I've got Shelly electricity meters in my house, four of them. My fuse board, my battery my future solar and my incomer. So I'm governing all that data. The thing about Shelly's is if they go bankrupt, this all works locally. It all just sits on my local network. I don't have to go via a web browser for it, which I, but I can, but it all just sits there and it'll work with home assistant. So I could say, well, if it's freezing outside, turn the boiler on. If it's warm outside, there's a request for the heating, don't turn it on. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep the water at a constant temperature going around. I throw it around quick so it doesn't lose a lot of temperature. Or whether I want it coming back virtually cold and heat it up again. I'm going to look into that. But there's a lot going off because uh, a new boiler is a couple of grand. Maybe more than that. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's three or four grand. But 50 quid and a bit of playing around. Balancing my radiators properly, which no one ever does. I might be able to save myself a decent amount of money. So you see up there now, like I've logged into this Shelly and it's given me what I've called external temperature, boiler flow and boiler return. And then you'll see at the top, there's a little on off button. You can use that as a momentary click on, click off, all different combos buttons. So you could actually use that to turn the boiler on off if you really wanted to. I'm not going to yet. I'm going to carry on using the Hive I've got, even though it was an upgrade from what I had, but they are a bit shit apparently. But yeah, I'm going to use that in conjunction with some code in Home Assistant or something like that. And then you've got these graphs that I'll put up next. So you can see what's been going off and you get all the historic data because it holds it all in that little box, believe it or not, for 50 quid. Have a look at the Shelly site. I'm not sponsored by anything, but they're really good. They sell some really novel products. I've seen quite a few other electricians using them as well that I respect. Not only the bell ends, but the ones I respect are using them. So yeah, the good bits of kit. Bear in mind, could slow your Wi-Fi down a bit if you start putting 50 of them in. I uh, generally avoid Wi-Fi enabled um, home automation stuff because it will slow your network down. However, in here... I've got four APs and five different wireless networks, so 
sort of a bit sport and that, but if you start jamming them onto your Virgin box, it's going to fucking not let you play Call of Duty. The questions are rolling already, so I'll answer them while I'm here, yeah? The centre types are PT100, so they're not the most accurate, you know what I mean? But it's a fucking central eating board in my ass. I'm not making uh, I'm not making hot water for NASA. The PT100s, I ordered the Shelly PM1, which I think is the little nodule that's on there that that add-on goes to. That add-on will do fucking all sorts of stuff, but the add-on will run five, although I only like to use three, PT100s, which you got with it. I think the whole lot cost me 50 quid. Like I say, not using it to control my boiler just yet. I've just got it, data gathering, sat there doing its thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet or I'm going to do it. I'm just playing because it's bank holiday. I'm fucking bored. And look at the state of this place. Jesus. If you'd like me to be really boring, which I will be and talk about temperature things, yeah. PT100s are a three-wire sensor. Three wires disappear to a little dot. The little dot's a temperature sensor. And to give a temperature range, they measure the resistance across two of those wires. And I believe the third one's what they call an exciter. That's just how it works on three wires. So it came with three of them. They are not super accurate, yeah, but again, I'm not making hot water for NASA, but they are reasonably accurate for a domestic border in a house. They're more than accurate for room sensors. However, they can be a long way out. So the Shelly has software that comes with it that enables you to put those in a known temperature thing. For example, at sea level, which I almost am at, water boils at 100. So you could drop them into some boiling water and calibrate it to 100. I put them in a mug with some hot water, around the temperature I think the part's gonna be, which is about 45. I used a thermometer that I know is reasonably accurate, a high quality lab grade thermometer, and then I tweaked the offsets so that they all measured the same level. In industry, they use a lot of thermocouples, K-type, J-types. K-type's the most popular because it's got the ranges that humans operate at. However, they are very expensive to measure. They are very expensive to calibrate. They require more electronics than can fit in that little box. So yeah, PT100 are cheap and cheerful. And you'll find most things that are doing temperature in your house, thermostats, um, food thermometers and all that, they're all using PT100. I very much doubt they're using thermocouple type things, especially K-type, because they're expensive. If you move into industry, process control, automation, all that kind of stuff, you'll be using thermocouples, two-wire or three-wire, with because you can get a little puck that goes in the thermocouple. There's one in there somewhere. Let's try and find it. And you can measure the, the measure the temperature at source, convert it over a 428 milliamp loop and send it for miles. But for what I'm doing in a normal desk cars, PT100 is fine. If anyone's got any great new other ways of measuring temperature, let me know and I'll uh, put my postcard. Bit of general electrical content back on the boiler now. Um, the boiler has been on because it's been cold, it's raining today. So I've got a little bit of data. So I'm going to use that data to adjust this flow temperature, which at the minute is basically round as bizarre as it'll go. And I'll tell you why that's no good, apparently, from what I've been told in a moment. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to modify on this. So at the minute, I've already done a few calculations of these numbers, look, from a hot water. So I know there's about 43, which is about the temperature I have it in the shower. Hence, it's set to that because I'm the person that has the shower the hottest. So that goes in the bath as well when the kids go in the bath and it naturally cools down to a level they can get into. So that seems to be the peak point for me at the minute. I'm not sure how accurate that is. So what I'm going to do is, if I can turn this down a little bit, I'll save a little bit of gas when I... I don't want to turn it down too much though, it's a bit of a pain in the arse. But what I'm going to do is, this probe over here, which was going to be my external one, I'm going to stick that into the hot water outlet, which is this one, just to see what... Just to measure and plot what temperature the hot water's coming out at. See if it does relate to that. I did that on a fluke multimeter at the tap. Those temperatures are at the tap. But I'm just going to put it on here and I'm going to gather data on my hot water because then I might be able to tweak it down or something. I don't know. Or check it at the tap. Either way, data is good and I'll show you why data is good. I purposely turned this round to full the other week. Last week, before I fit this Shelly, for the reason I'm going to show you now. Because my Shelly meter not only measures the temperature, but it also plots the data. So if I go to the graph, which I'm going to put above me in a minute, We'll be able to see what the temperature has been. So on that top setting, from that graph that I've just put there, you can see that my boiler temperature is going to 82.9, 83 degrees on the outlet at 6 o'clock this morning, which apparently is too high. So I'm going to turn it down a bit. But the return temperature, the return temperature is 69 degrees. So I'm losing about 11 degrees over my entire system. I've met, apparently, I'm meant to be losing that over each radiator. That means when the water gets back here, it's still warm enough to go round again. So the problem is now I'm, I'm, I'm putting the gas on to heat the, heat the water up a very, very small amount. 
Whereas the, the Gatta boiler apparently runs more economically if it brings it up a lot. Because if I've put the heat into the house over there, it doesn't get back here. Then this heat is being used to raise the water temperature a lot more because that makes it more efficient. So basically, waste energy like that. So I'm going to tweak it down. I wrote a little chart on here, look. I've took that chart there, put it on there. There's a frost stat and then 12 positions. And I've started logging on this pad what my flows and returns are. And the good thing about the Shelly thing is that um, I am able to look at that historical value. I don't have to sit here with the thermometer reading it. I can look at my phone and guess what it is, which is great. So today, I'm going to turn that down by two notches to there. So it should come back. It should go out cooler and come back colder. Um, and I'm going to put this external temperature sensor... I'm going to drag that and I'm going to stick it into this hot water pipe and get the actual hot water reading that's leaving my boiler. Because that data is useful to me. At the minute, this is doing fuck all. I know what temperature is outside. I can just look outside. So now that'll monitor my hot water temperature and my hot water's running. So if I'm running the hot tap over the shower, I'll keep an eye on that. See if I can turn that down a little bit on this one. In fact, I might just turn it down a little bit anyway to that 43 point. I'll turn down to what I marked before as my 43 point there, look, and see if that match what I get. Although that reading was at the tap obviously some heat will be lost in the pipe flow so i've done that i've turned that down too i've made a note of it and we'll see what happens the only information i've got so far is what people have sent me on instagram i had a chance to have a look but thanks to everyone that sent me a message telling me about stuff yeah i've heard someone saying there's a 60 80 60 rule it should leave here at 80 and come back at 60 that's the peak performance apparently so that involves you not only having the flow and return temperature on here that means all your radiators need to be balanced properly, which is where you set on one side of your radiator, there'll be an adjuster, and on the other side, thing called a lock shield. You're meant to put thermometers on them and set them so that you lose 11 degrees over the radiator. So every radiator in your house loses 11 degrees over itself. Therefore, it leaves here at one temperature, loses a bit in the pipes, loses 11 degrees in your radiator, loses a bit coming back, and gets back here about 60. So what I'm probably going to do is, balance all the radiators up because we've got a sneak suspicion that will make a massive difference it's like a tuned engine in it tuned engines work better but no one tunes the central heat because no one cares so i'm gonna buy some rad thermometers and do that shelly do a 12 volt one of these things as well so i'm thinking about buying one of them making my own part thermometers that are mobile because the benefit of this is whenever this is running the shelly's get the data and i can just look at it or i can look at the historical data to set my radiators up, the reason I think people don't do it properly is you've got to sit there with part thermometers on your radiator pipes, tweaking it. And when you tweak it, it doesn't just change. Heat takes ages to dissipate. If you turn a radiator valve down, it could take 45 minutes to cool down to a new temperature. So thinking about making a little shelly that runs off a 12 volt battery that's got the same setup as this, that I can leave on the radiator and I can tweak it down suit because that enables me to get better tuning and thus save more money. But yeah, I think at the minute I'm just pissing gas out into the ether here. I'm just heating that water up, sending it out hot. The radiators, it's whizzing through them so fast and whizzing back so quickly that it's just topping it up. So, yeah, this is very boring. But if you're into your statos, you'll love this. But, yeah, Shelly's already doing it for Matt. And, like I said, I'm looking at making a mobile one.